Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to all of you and wherever you are tuning in from. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are excited to share with you our episode four of this series, The Inclusive Classroom. We are going to be talking about supporting our diverse writers. But before we talk about that, let's talk about what we've done in the last few weeks, just to talk about how we got here. So we started our series, of course, with um, reading, all these wonderful reading resources for all of our students. And we went into translations for our families and for our schools and for our kids as well. And last week, we spent a lot of time with our amazing colleague. Um, do you remember who she is, Ricardo? Araceli Garcia with an I, not a Y. The infamous Araceli Garcia, who taught us all great things about literacy across the curriculum. So here we are now kind of taking the next step um, from talking about literacy and talking about how do we support our diverse writers. So my name is Teresa Castro. And I am Ricardo Resinos. And we are both Tectosis from Hacienda La Puente Unified. So our objective, we will always go over, I try to skip over it all the time and then I get in trouble. So um, our objective is to discover ways to make instruction accessible to all students, regardless of level, language, or disability. Explore online tools that provide an inclusive experience for every student. That's why we're here today and every time we're with you. Um, our purpose is just to discover ways to make instruction accessible to all students. And we're gonna be focusing on writing, of course. So we're gonna talk about the essential tech tools dictation editor originality reports and so much more we'll talk about in our next slide okay um, our non-purpose we don't expect you to throw out what you have been doing and please don't feel limited to what to share today we are just at the tip of the iceberg today we're just talking about a few things because there's so much to talk about with writing so um, I'm I know I'm I would love for you to share your ideas actually so that we can go more in depth in those as well and I think something that Teresa always mentions, these are tools that once we equip our students with them, they can use them on their own. There's nothing extra yes. from your part that needs to be done. So just keep that in mind. Yes, definitely. And um, of course, why are we doing this? Why did we choose to do this today? Um, our main reason really is to support our different levels of writers and our different types of writers. So to support our emerging writers, our struggling writers, and also our ELL and um, writers of other languages as well. So we wanted to make sure you know tools to do that. And of course, with writing, with the tools, you keep them engaged, you're meeting the students where they are, you're tapping into their digital skills. And of course, it's fun as well. Once the students learn how to do it, they think I think it's pretty fun actually um what so we're not going to talk about all these right now we're actually just going to go through them so we're going to spend a lot of time in google and in microsoft office um, 365 we have so much that we wanted to share like when you talk about writing you can go on forever we could do a series just on writing but we wanted to talk more about tools that uh, we notice that a lot of educators and students overlook. They don't know that these are actually there. So um, we wanted to talk to you about those kind of hidden tools that are so amazing and so useful, and hopefully you can find use for them in your classrooms. And as we mentioned with the reading tools, remember that these are just forms of support for our students, not a solution. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. If you ask my daughter to write for you, she has a very difficult time. But if you use some of the tools that we're going to see today, she actually is able to express her thoughts, you know, using her voice. And after that, she's able to go back and rewrite her idea. So again, formal support, not a solution for the kids to just do everything this way. Right, absolutely. And you know, that's a great thing. You know, I kind of want to talk about that before we get into it. And, you know, of course, we explicitly have to teach students these skills of how to write properly, what comes from spelling, formatting, grammar, punctuation, all those things are very important. But we want to make sure that the, the students are able to get their message out. You know, sometimes we know, especially with the younger kids, they get so caught up in how to spell a certain word that they kind of forget what their story was about because they're so obsessed with trying to fix that. And that's what we're trying to um we're trying to fix that right now. We want to, we want to be able to hear their story and then give them tools to fix those little things. Because we know where you're going to teach them in other lessons how to do those as well. But that's our point today is we want to hear their story and we want to give them the tools to make sure that it's legible and readable for all of us who are going and, to And as Teresa said, I'd rather have that student that has this tool so they actually can provide some type of, uh, uh, how would I put this, um, proof that they have mastered what we're trying to learn yeah. as opposed to not doing anything because of the obstacles um, that writing might provide yeah. to them. 
And it depends always, we always think about what is it that we're trying to assess here? Are we assessing the content of their writing? Or are we assessing, you know, their grammar, you know, so you have to be very intentional. And so, um, so we hope these tools um, are super helpful for you. So we're going to go ahead and get started right here. So I'm going to start in Google. And uh, we know we love Google, there are so many things that we can do in here, but we're going to focus on tools that we've seen that a lot of teachers don't even know they're here. So I'm just going to start with our favorite one first, because we were talking about students being able to share their stories. So this very bottom, and once you go to tools, you can go down here to voice typing. And once we share this with teachers, they're always like, whoa, that's amazing. And again, we don't want this to be a crutch. We don't want students to not learn how to type because this tool is here. Um, but again, we want to, them to be able to share their story. So we see a lot of little, little ones using this tool and also, um, you know, our students who, who'd rather just speak it out as well. So you just simply just click on it. I am talking about all these wonderful tools in Google right now, period. I'm so excited to share them, exclamation mark. So as you can see, it's just very easy to talk through it and then you can go through and edit it as well. And then right here, you can also speak in your other language. Um, <laughs> are we, you want to say something? Okay, go. I, I do think about, uh, we mentioned that English language learner, uh, think about the purpose actually. Now they're practicing the language when they're using this tool and not only practicing the language, speaking it, but also now they can come back and fix the writing mistakes that they might have uh, with, the, with the tool. So, you know, double, you know, plus right there. Absolutely. I was um, I was in another class this week, um, stepping in a class, and this a student didn't know any English. He knew Chinese only, and we were learning about how to solve this math problem, and I knew he knew it. I could see it in his eyes, but he just didn't have the right words. And so imagine a tool like this, like, go ahead, explain it in your own language. I just, you know, want you to be able to do it. Just allowing him to participate because a lot of the time I notice he just would skip those problems. He would skip those types of activities because of the language barriers. So just imagine being able to participate in your own language as well. Anyways, that was only one thing. I'm sorry. Let me keep going. <laughs> okay. So again, we could choose um, any language you want to speak in and then you can continue on that way. Okay. Um, let's continue on with the tools. We're not going to go through all of these, just ones that we see used a lot. So spelling and grammar, we know that's pretty obvious. Make sure that they're actually turned on. So you want to show your spelling suggestions, grammar suggestions, and you can see, um, you can have your personal dictionary as well if you have words that you use um, commonly that are not general, generally used. And then so you could see right here that there, there's a little squiggly line under them. The kids know that, okay, that's something that I need to go back and check. And you would right click and then it tells you what they, what it should be, what they um, suggest. Okay. And you could ignore it and things like that. Okay. So let me just continue. Um, you could do a word count. I know there's a lot of times when um, maybe to limit how long or how short you want a certain piece. You don't want to dwell with the word count, but you could. You would press the word count and then it tells you all of this information. We don't want to get, we don't want the kids to be fixated there, right? But it's a good tool as well. Okay. Um, review suggested edits. Let me see. I'm going to use this one. So this is one from a teacher. So a student might come in here and go, okay, you know what? The teacher went through this. I could review the suggested edits and just go through them. Or I just simply, I see them if I scroll up and down, depending on how long your document is. Okay. So let me continue. I can compare documents. This is, kind of, this is a new thing. You can see right here, it says new. And I just wanted to tell you what it does. So um, I had, I'm going, going over here. So what I did was I had a document and I compared it with another document that had some similarities, but not all of it. And when I compared them, it made this brand new document automatically. And the parts that were similar or exactly the same, it kept it. And the parts that were not, it removed it. I'm not exactly sure how I would use that yet, but just wanted to, you to know that that tool was in there, that you could find a, a use for that. Okay. Another great one. Let me use this one. Another great one that I haven't used is citation. So I was doing some papers for this class I was taking. And I do not love citations. So you would have to come over here. You would choose um, what type of format you want. You would add your citation source. So you actually, um, you would create it yourself. Okay, I'm not going to go through all those steps right now. Um, 
let me go back. But I already made one here. I just made a pretend one right here. So as I'm writing, if I do want to add a citation, these are for our kids. If you're teaching them how to do this, they don't have to do it by hand. They can actually create it ahead of time. They could cite it. You could see it cited right there. And then when they're done at the very end, they could insert work cited and they could have work cited or bibliography or whatever they usually have, which is a pretty cool resource that I wish I knew about when I was taking that class so I could reuse um, my sources because we use them a lot. Okay, uh, I'm going to go on. You have your dictionary, of course, which shows you um, the meanings of some of the words. Um, you could translate the entire document if you wanted to. You just select your language down here. Ricardo, am I going too fast? I'm okay, right? You're I'm just good. kind of cruising through. Okay, good. Thank you. And we already talked about voice typing. That's what we did earlier. And then you have um, your preferences. So you can, some people don't like seeing certain things as they're typing. You can go ahead and you can uncheck or you could check things. And then you have your substitutions as well. So these are kind of like shortcuts. So if I would do, if I would type this, then I would end up with this over here. Okay, those are kind of cool. And another thing right here before I go, um, your accessibility um, settings, you can actually turn them on for your students who have readers and things like that who might need support with that. Your activity dashboard just kind of tells you all the things, like especially if they're collaborating and things like that. Um, speaking of collaborating, I wanted to go back. I, this is not in the tools, but I think this is really important for us not to miss. Right here in file, version history, a lot of students, you know, we, we want to teach them how to find version history because sometimes, have you ever had that student panic because they just deleted everything <laughs> or, you know, things went awry and they're like, what happened? Or he did it, she did it because they're collaborating on something and you're like, oh, you're okay. Um, when you go into version history, they can see it and then you can actually see who, well, I, I was in both in different um, accounts here, but you can go through the versions and see what, who did what. <laughs> Not that you really care about that, but you can go, okay, let's go back to this one. You know, go ahead, Ricardo. I was going to say, but sometimes when you do assign those group works, right, where they're collaborating and you end up with one student doing the work, you can actually come here and see, you know, how much each person in that group actually participated and was part of that project. Absolutely. Accountability, right? So, and you always, you know, when Google was kind of new to us, we, just, we always told the kids, I know what you're doing and then I know who did it. And they're like, yeah, right. <laughs> and then you show them the report like, oh, man. You really can. So everyone's on it and doing their jobs. All right. So let me see. Am I missing anything else in there? Um, I think that's one I just really wanted to make sure I didn't miss. Um, there's tons of stuff in Google, but I know we wanted to show you some <laughs> awesome tools in uh, Microsoft as well. So Ricardo, are you ready for that? Or did I miss anything here? No, I think you got it all. We'll come back if you want to the mm -hmm. originality reports. Yes, uh, yes, so we can show yes. that how it looks that in Canvas and also in Google Classroom. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to Microsoft. And now we're going to see some of the same features that you saw in Google. And I think a couple of more that Office uh, 365 just a few more. <laughs> just a few has. So I'm in Office 365. Today, we're going to focus specifically with Office 365 online um, work. But some of these features are also available on the desktop version. So I'm over here. And I can come in here and just hit the plus and create a brand new Word document or PowerPoint and so on and so on. OK, so let's go create a brand new Word document, okay? So just like we had uh, voice typing in Google, we have something similar in Word that is called Dictate. And it's over here, it's this little microphone. And basically this is just speech to text and allows you to voice type basically, okay? So um, we're gonna go ahead and click on it. And notice that when I do that, it starts basically typing what I'm saying, okay? I can come here and turn it off, okay? And I want you to see that in here, I also can move it around. So maybe if it's in my way, I can move it to the top if I want to. Okay, I do have settings in here where I can tell it which language, just like we could do on Google, we can do on Dictate too. I can tell it which microphone. I can enable the auto punctuation if I wanted to, and I can filter sensitive phrases. I have that on by default, okay? But also, I wanna make sure that you get to see some of the editing commands that you can do with Dictate, which is pretty amazing. I'm not sure if Google has this, but I think this is uh, pretty cool, okay? So let's say that I was um, started typing again, okay? So let's go ahead and go new line. Review this document by tomorrow. Delete tomorrow. Notice how it deleted tomorrow there. What? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> you can also delete the whole sentence. Let me show you that. New line. Review this document by tomorrow. Delete that. 
Notice how I deleted the whole thing right there, okay? Uh, you also have the ability to use formatting commands with the uh, dictate. So let me show you an example. Can you help me finish the project by next week? Underline week. Notice <laughs> how that happened right there. Oh my goodness. Uh, and there's other ones you can idolize. Uh, what, some of my favorites, um, check this out. I love this one. Start list. First item. <laughs> New line, start number list, who's on first? So <laughs> great, great tools to have. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I know uh, Teresa also showed you how to add comments. I love the fact that you, as a teacher, if I was grading and I was adding comments, the fact that I can use dictate instead of typing will be huge for me. So if I came in here to the dictate tool and I said, add comments. Add comments. Great job on that paragraph. Good job. And you could do that, and you can actually put it in here if you wanted to. If I wanted to add it in here, I didn't do it, but it will be there if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, you also can pause by just saying pause dict dictation and also exit dictation. It gets you out of it. So some <laughs> tools that are pretty incredible, and I know my accent didn't play as well as it should have, but you actually got to see some of the stuff that you can do with uh, Dictate in uh, Word. Teresa, Better anything e. to say? You know, I love my shortcuts, but I'm just telling you, even, you know, I'm not a struggling writer, you know, but even myself, like I would find these so useful and such time savers. <laughs> I would use these all the time. Wow, those are amazing. Thank you for sharing those. Right, so that's that's one of the tools that we have. The next tool that we have, and um, I wanna show you this because I think it's very helpful. I, I use it all the time. It's the ability to, um, to turn on word prediction on Windows 10. And I know we're moving to Windows 11, but this still works on Windows 10. And you can turn this on uh, very, very easily. So I'm just going to go down here to next to Microsoft to search, okay? And I want to just um, go to settings. So I'm going to type settings. Go to it. On your computer? On my computer. Okay. okay. So I actually went down next to the Windows logo. I just went to my search and I type settings. And I type just settings. And now that I'm here, I can just type text suggestion. Okay. I'm going to click on it. And what you want to do is you want to go to the hardware keyboard. And by default, this is turned off, OK? So notice that I have it turned on. So it says, show text suggestions as I type. So I want to have that on. And autocorrect misspell words as I type, OK? And one more that I do have is I also have the multilingual one because I want to make sure that I have my Spanish. Uh, and I use uh, as a Spanish teacher, I have it all the time. But this tool will work mm. for you. So once that I turn this on, I'm going to go back to just any document, OK? And let me just type. Notice how my word prediction is coming up over here. Did you see that? So let's oh. go to the part. And notice that, notice that I can just kind of get it, right? I, if I make mistakes too, it will actually correct them for me. So just having that. So notice that I did that wrong, right? So it's telling me that it's wrong. So I can just come and fix it right there. So another tool that you might want to have on this is not just for our students i use this all the time <laughs> you know when you're texting you have the predictive text and you're just kind of like you know basically when i don't same, have that everything is spelled wrong <laughs> basically the same thing right uh and and, wow. and once you turn it on it basically works on anything inside of windows but so if i'm writing an email right if i'm on word if i'm on powerpoint it's going to work for you very easy to turn on and i just went next to windows do the search over here and i type um settings and i turned on text suggestions for the key that was pretty easy to do. And if you're like me, of course, I see something like that. And I'm like, no, my kids will never learn how to write properly if they use all these resources. But again, uh, we want to make sure they're not using it as a crutch. They're actually using it as a resource. And again, if, if you're perp it depends on the purpose of your assignment. Right? And you know, so, I, I've noticed that at least with my daughter, just having the word in front of her, she's seen it over and over and over. So she's, you know, repetition, repetition, right? So she's typing it wrong, but she gets to see hmm. it. And she gets to actually see how the word is spelled. So that kind of helps too. So uh, another tool to have inside of Windows that, that I wanted you to see. Um, another great tool. I'm going to go back and I'm going to open a Word document that I already created. Because I did want to show you um, this in 
incredible tool, which is Microsoft Editor. So if you think about that spell checker um, that Teresa showed you on Google, well, that's gone over here. That No, that's like so 1960s. Um, they have a <laughs> brand new what? natural language pro uh, processor that actually checks a lot for you. And I want to show you that, okay? So um, if you went to review, you have the ability to get it right here too. Notice that I have editor right here, but I also can go to review and I have it available right here. So where spell checker used to be before, you have this little guy, little pencil that I'm going to click on. Okay, when I click on it, what I want you to see is that it's going to do some amazing things. First of all, it's going to look at my <laughs> document. It's gonna analyze and it's gonna say, you know what, that has a score of 66%, okay? And this is based on many things. Okay. By default, I have it set up to formal writing. So if maybe, the, you know, just because the academic writing, but you do can switch it to professional or casual. So formal is being a lot more strict when it comes to the way it's looking at it right now. And that's why I got the, the 66%. But why did I get that percentage? Let me kind of show you where that came from. Okay. So notice that, yeah, our old spelling thing, right? I have an error on spelling. So if I click on it, it says, you know what? This word right here, it's wrong. Okay. Right, and I can come kind of correct it right here. Okay, so that's fixed. And notice that it went to green, telling me that it fixed it. Okay, and now my check mark is fine. Grammar, you have three errors right here. You can go on it, be like, oh, you're missing a period. I can ignore it, or I can just go ahead and fix it too. So the spelling and grammar are still there, and it's going to take me through each of them. I can ignore, I can go back, and so on and so on. So great tool to have right there. Okay, so my grammar, but there's so many other tools in here. Okay, clarity. Okay, so if I check here and click on it, it's going to tell me. Guess what? This uh, they were hired by a well-known headhunt headhunting firm. Uh, don't use that word. Why don't you use recruiting? Okay, and I can go ahead and click it. And now uh, my clarity, it's fixed. Let me go to formality. Okay, so let me go to formality, and it says let's. That's not formal. Let's switch it to let let us in this case, if that's what you wanted to do, right? Or you can ignore it if you want to. Let me show you. My dog barf says, "No, -uh, you don't want to use that uh, vomit it. That's the word you should use." So. Kind of there, okay? Uh, let's go bananas. Like, uh-uh, I don't want you to use that. One formality, let's make sure that we use it. It's too informal. So why don't we use go wild, okay? So great tool to help you fix things in here, okay? Inclusiveness. Think about this. When we think about inclu inclusivity, right? And we think about our students, right? So there's an error here, okay? Let's look at this, okay? So this word over here, okay? A gender neutral term will be more inclusive than the word you're using right here. So it's telling me, you know what? You need to change that, okay? Can you use flight attendant or steward, right? So let's go ahead and change that. Pretty incredible, right? I mean, I mean, in, uh, inclus uh, inclusiveness is pretty big. Uh, punctuation conventions. I'll show you one more. Think about this, sensitive geopolitical references. <laughs> Okay, what does that mean? And I was trying to figure out what this means. So let me click on it, okay? So this particular country that I put is now known as Saint, not a, a city actually, it's St. Petersburg now. So let me go ahead and change that. So notice the idea, what it told me that I could fix now. It wasn't just a spell checker with grammar <laughs> and spelling, but I had all these refinements that I could actually go <laughs> and fix that I did not have available somewhere else, okay? Um, I have text <laughs> predictions turned on by default. <laughs> Uh, I want you to see the insights, okay? It learns it learns to tell you the type of writer that you are. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look at the document stats. And it's going to tell me, you know, I know Teresa showed you the word count. We do have it right here, okay? How many characters? How many paragraphs? The time that it will take someone to read this, okay? Uh, to speak it, if they mm -hmm. wanted to, okay? The readability, how fairly easy to read, Okay. And then how many suggestions it gave me. So think about the stats that keep growing as you keep using the editor. Such a great tool to have, okay? So uh, I know I don't want Teresa to be jealous because we have the editor. So what I wanted to show you um, is that editor is actually available for you to use as a Chrome extension, okay? So if you went to... Uh, <laughs> Teresa keeps laughing. If you went to the, uh, You're just showing off at this point, but keep going. If awesome. you went to the to the Chrome Web Store and you look for Microsoft Editor, notice that you can actually add it to your Google Chrome. I already have it. I don't, I'm not gonna remove it. But now let's go to Google and let's open the document, okay? And let's just no, no, no. Let's just throw some stuff in there. Let's let's um uh, let's make some mistakes. Too, right? So notice that if I come in here and I right click in here, let me go to this one first so you can see it. Notice that it's Microsoft Editor. It's not uh, Google. And it's telling me what's wrong here. So Microsoft has taken over Google right here. Okay. 
<laughs> Notice that I correct the mistakes before. Uh, I think it was spelled wrong before. It was. It was, right? So um, and it fixed it. <laughs> and it fixed it for me before, right? So if I come here, it tells me, you know what? That's wrong. Let's go fix it. So let me show you when I go. It's the beta for uh, Google. But notice that I have spelling being checked, grammar being checked, refinements, as I showed you before. So the same tools that I had available in the Word document are available here. And something even more, I have added wow. English and Spanish in here too, okay? So I actually can come in here and add all of my different languages. I want, I can tell it what I want to check. So if I want to check inclusiveness in here, I can check it and give me some options in here. So just a great tool to have, okay? Pretty incredible. That is also available for you to use when you're working inside of Google. I wanted to make sure that you knew that too, okay? Anything you might want to mention with that, Teresa? I mean, I'm sure there's so much to say, but my mind is blown right now. I can't even wrap my mind around it. <laughs> right. Um, something um, um, in addition that to to what we saw with editor, they also have something called uh, called similarity reports. Okay, which is a great tool for our students to be able to check and make sure that they're not maybe taking something from the internet or from somewhere else and and and, and using it as their own work. So to make sure that they're not what's the right word that I don't want. Uh, uh, what would I say? What, what what would you call it, Teresa? That they're not uh, borrowing or plagiarizing. Plagiarizing, or... right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to say it like that. But, yeah. it, but, it's the truth. <laughs> but let me show you how that will work. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to open um, just a document in here. And I'm going to come in here and then let me just, I'm writing about dinosaurs right now. Okay, and I'm going to go into my friend um, Britannica and just borrow something. <laughs> Your friend, I like it. Okay, let's just borrow this. And let's take it back. Oh, did you lose my screen? Something happened right there. No, you're good. Okay, and I'm just going to paste that there. Okay, I think I'm, I'm, I I forgot the D, right? Did an I on that one? Okay, and let me go ahead and uh, go to our best friend, Wikipedia, and borrow something from there too. <laughs> Kids don't do this, Ricardo. I, I know they don't, but just wanted to make sure that you knew that this was available too, okay? And let me just format this just to make it look the same way, right? Oh, good. And I was trying to figure out how they did this before, and I was like, they just basically went in here and they changed change the uh, the uh, font, right? And the that, number, yeah. And the number too, right? So once we have my very original document right here, notice that I can come into the editor that we saw a second ago. And again, because you have that package, you have an option right here to check, okay? And I'm just checking, okay? And it would actually tell you what's going on. It's gonna use uh, Bing to tell you, but it's gonna say, uh, you know what, dude? <laughs> you uh, you took this from Britannica, which I did, right? So notice that uh, the ability, you actually have the uh, ability to add in text citation, and also it gives you the ability to decide what you wanna use, MLA, APA, or Chicago. I don't have to do anything. I can come in here and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and add it. And I want you to see what happened. Did you see what happened? It showed it into green, it quoted, and it actually added the citation for so me. So now the stuff you borrowed, now you could do it properly. You could borrow properly. it properly. Oh, Correct. wow. So now if we okay. go to the next one over here, right? Our next um, issue that we had, we can come in here. And then again, we can check on uh, similarity again. Sorry, I should have done it this way. My fault. Okay, and then it's showing me this one. It says, um, you know what? This part over here actually found that it took it from could be from two different places for, from Facebook. Isn't that funny? <laughs> okay, so I can look at that one and then I can keep going and I can be like, oh, you took this from somewhere else. Okay, so again, I can come here and say, you know what? I want to do this one. I don't know, APA if I wanted to. Okay, and then add. And it will also do the citation wow. the right way. Okay. So kind of a great tool to have that I think is going to help our kids. I could have done that. I only did two. I think there's two more that I didn't fix. But just think about the idea that it's going to help our students, right, be able to properly cite and, and, and stay away from those, you know, dangerous, you know, waters, right, where they might be borrowing something. You know how Google puts can also do the work cited at the bottom? Can you also mm -hmm. do it here? the bibliography yes so uh, so yes so you could so i could come in here and i can come down here and i can go ahead and go to one of our uh, problems that we had so let me go ahead and then i'm gonna copy let's use the uh, let's use the uh, mla and i'm gonna copy citation okay and then i can come to the bottom and i think i can paste it 
and notice that now as I'm working on my uh, bibliography, it automatically did it for me. So wait, hold on. I just want to be sure. So for the <laughs> for the Google one, I actually had to make that up myself. I had to create it by putting the author, the site, and everything. And here, it found it online for you. <laughs> yeah, right. So I can come over here. Look. So I forgot to do this one. Oh, I forgot to do this one. So let me go and copy it. Okay, because I only did the second one, right? I was taking my so class. let me go down here and let me go ahead and paste it. And I notice what it's doing, exactly what Teresa had to do. And Google, she had to actually look it up and type it the right way. It automatically does it for you. It could have saved Teresa hours. 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 So just I'm... think some tools, right? Wow. Dictate, uh, similarity reports, editor, um, word prediction, all these tools that can definitely help our students, I think. Okay, go on. What's next? Um, I think um, you wanted to mention, uh, Teresa, that, okay, so our students are, you know, they're great about, they've created their project, they've, 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 they've written their, their, their assignment, right? But then maybe now, and I, I really wanted to show you this, okay? Our student completed this, okay? But now they wanted to be able, be able to share this to the world and to make it look completely different. So Word offers some amazing tools that maybe some of our teachers are not aware of. So this particular tool, um, a document about planet Earth, okay? I have the ability to go on Word, click on File, click on Export, and notice that you have two options here. The first one is Transform to a Web Page, which basically is transforming into Sway, which is one of our favorite tools. We, we don't have time to, to, to spend on how to use Sway today, but notice how it's going to take this particular document and it's going to just say, okay, you know what? I can take that Planet Earth and I, I can make it look like a website and you can just choose, tell me which one you want to use, okay? And you, as a student, come in here and say, you know what? I like this one. Let's use this one right here, okay? Transform. And it's going to take that boring document that we had a second ago and it's going to turn it into a Microsoft Sway, Microsoft Sway that is now online, available to the world, and turn that document into this web page that is just completely different from what you had before. Okay, so it's come over here and, and, and change the way it looks. They can share it with uh, as, as as an assignment, I know to, to the teachers, right, or, or show it to their parents and so on and so on. So just a great tool that you have. You also have the ability to do that uh, by exporting as a PowerPoint. Okay, so if I went there. It's going to fetch different themes. It's going to find it. And you, and you always talking about Earth. <laughs> so notice what it did. Oh my okay. Goodness. How is it even doing this, right? Artificial intelligence, right? So I can say, you know what? I like that one. Let's do that. So it's going to say, you know what? Let me prepare the slides. It's actually reading my document. It's deciding what will be the best way to put those um, slides in. And you're going to notice that we have a title page. Look at what it did with our PowerPoint. It's pretty wow, incredible, so right? Yes, yeah. right? And so then you have it has some choices on the and side. And you also have some choices on the side, right? That uh, uh, if we have designer. time, I think Teresa might be able to go into designer. We'll see if we have time for that. No. I probably don't have time for that today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But just some, some of the tools that we do have available in Google and also in Microsoft. Now, I'm going to confess, we actually, you know, even us as professionals use this all the time and we get compliments on how our material looks and we're like, mm, it, we kind of just automatically did it for <laughs> us sometimes. <laughs> it's great, great tools. Okay. So I know, I know um, we just wanted to kind of give you a taste of some of the stuff that is out there. Some of the stuff that might be, uh, uh, might, might be ways to support our students. Again, not as a solution, but just a form of support for our students. And those are some of them that we, that would be good. Was there something that you wanted to show in Canvas? Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So so you did. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. So you did get to see the similar reports. And we want to be fair to Google, um, too. So they do have something called originality reports that actually works inside of Canvas. And our teachers use Canvas all the time. But uh, if you are that, that particular district that uses Google Classroom, you are familiar with originality reports. So what I want to show you is that in here, I can come into Google. Uh, into Canvas, I'm sorry, and I can go and create an assignment. And I'll do this um, fairly quick so you can see it. And I'm just going to go and just create an assignment. And let's call it um, Google Assignment Test Delete. So I remember to delete it. I'm going to type delete, OK? okay. And then here, I can come in here, and I can maybe give the instructions to my students. So I'm just going to, I'm going to be lazy, and I'm just going to go to my OneDrive. 
even though I'm using Google. I'm just going to go to my OneDrive. And I'm just going to bring the question in, OK? Just because I want to make sure that um, I do this fast. So let's bring um, our question. So my essay question for this particular assignment is going to be, let me just find it. This particular question, I have the ability to embed a link. So let me just embed the document. So I'm going to create this um, assignment. And I just I wanted to have the prompt for my students to be able to use inside of the rich content editor. Okay, I'm gonna make it towards 10 points assignment, and I am using an external tool. Okay, and we're gonna use Google um, assignments. So let me find it. Okay, and now I'm gonna log in. Um, my account is correct, so I'm going to look, going to log in, and now it's gonna tell me just so you see. Okay, it's gonna say. Do you want to check for originality? Basically, the same uh, concept with similarities, but um, it does it. Um, I think it does it a little better. It does it from the teacher's point of view. So the teachers have five assignments that they can use. So be very, very careful when you use them, right? I would only use this for my AP class with my essay, my, my formal essay that they do. And I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and use it and continue. And then when the students turn in their assignments, I'm able to use the original report to check their assignments to make sure that they didn't borrow from somewhere else. But the <laughs> great thing about it is that I want you to see it from the student's point of view. And I'm going to share Teresa's screen that when I put that assignment out there, Teresa can come in here and go ahead, Teresa. Okay, so here I am from the student point of view. I'm just going to click on the assignment. And Ricardo, feel free to just talk over me or just interject as I'm going through this. And I could see what Ricardo had embedded up here. But I know it's a Google assignment down here. So I'm going to go ahead and open to attach and submit. And I'm going to create a document. And I can choose what um, type I want. I'm just going to do a doc just so you can see. And I'm gonna click on the actual assignment so I can go into it and actually alter it. So I'm going to um, borrow some information from online. Let me just grab some from another window over here. And there we are. So I can go back to the actual assignment right now and I can run an originality report. Is this where you want me to go through, Ricardo? Yes, please. OK, so hopefully it's already updated already. I'm going to go ahead and try it. Cross your fingers. So it tells me I have three of three original report runs available. I'm going to go ahead and run it. So notice how, as a teacher, I had five. As a student, they have three. Just, just want to make sure that you know, about, you know that. So view originality report. And it shows me my web matches right here. So here's my passage, and here's my top web match. So it tells me, um, no, you did not write this. This is where you actually got it. <laughs> is there anything else, any other information here, Ricardo, that would? No, the student will be able to 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 go ahead and correct it, that, right? Um, I love how, and I'll, I'll be honest, I love how in Office, it automatically will be able to turn it into citations, right? I don't think you can do that here. You will have to go and correct it yourself, right? Is that correct? Yes, you're correct. That's separate. I mean, I would I would have to go into and do it as citations. It doesn't mm -hmm. do it automatically. But go ahead and submit it when you're when you're done. Sure. Oops. Uh, go ahead and go back, and I'll just submit it. Mm -hmm. And then um, once Teresa has submitted that assignment, um, I will be able to see it. It might take a while to, for it to show up. Let's see if we, oh, there it is. So here's the assignment. So if I went in here, just to show you, okay? Um, if you are familiar with um, Canvas, you know that Google assignments are graded outside of, um, of SpeedGrader. So here's Teresa's assignment. I can go ahead and click on it. It's going to take me outside. But notice that as I did it, um, if I could go back, Oh, did I close that window? Let me reopen that window. I think I closed it twice, didn't I? Yeah. Notice that it actually told me before I even checked on it, I knew <laughs> <laughs> that there was something it's wrong with this, maker. right? It automatically told me. I didn't even have to. I, I'm like, so I can have a list of my students and be like, okay, I want to make sure that I, I pay special attention to that right there, right? And notice that when I open it, it automatically tells me, oh, guess what? 
you know, she didn't write this, right? So I automatically can see that and I can say, got it. And it's going to open the original reports right here. And I can go and check on it. And basically it will give me the same um, information <laughs> that it gave Teresa. So uh, similar reports in uh, Word. Originality reports in Google. Very, very great. Uh, I mean, great tools to, to be able to And this is not have. limited to Canvas. You know, you, you do this in Google Classroom as well for those who are using it there. So same same concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So another great tool to have for our students and also for the teacher if you didn't know um, that, that you had something like this. In addition, just, just to mention, our, our teachers at our district, our, uh, our high school teachers are lucky enough to have Turnitin.com that does this, but it's just a more uh, robust tool that does a lot more. Is there anything else that we missed, Teresa? Or is that um, all? So I was looking through my notes right now to make sure we didn't miss anything. And I know there are a lot of other things we wanted to touch, but I think uh, we're going to find places for them in our future um, sessions. But we just want to get you excited about next week. We actually have another amazing guest speaker who's been with us before. <laughs> Our marvelous um, mathematician friend, Gabriel Ward, is going to be with us next week to show us how to um, use math tools to have an inclusive classroom. So we're excited for him to come. And we are also going to be bringing a lot of these tools back together to show you how to help your students with speaking and other things like that in future episodes. So, um, Ricardo, is there anything I missed? I'm not a math teacher and I'm going to be learning a lot from Gabriel, but I Definitely. do want to, I can't wait to show you some math tools available under Office 365 that are just going to blow Here your we mind. go again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you got a lot out of that session. Feel free to approach us at any time if you have any questions and suggestions. And we will see you next week, same day, same time. Bye-bye. Thank you.